welcome, my name is Jack Jennings. In this course we have something very special planned. We're going to look at Rag Jog, which is a really interesting rag. It's very similar to blues and the kind of uh, phrasing structures that we use in blues guitar. So there's a real crossover here, but it's a fully authentic Indian classical rag. So it's a very, very exciting rag to play on the guitar. It seems to work really, really well. And we're also teaming up with Manish Pingle, who's a wonderful Indian slide guitarist. So again, there's a real connection there with the slide guitar being used in Indian music, and it's also, of course, a big sound of blues music. So we're going to be working with him, and he's going to help us to look at something very interesting called Tihai rhythm. So the Tihai is a very exciting concept where you play a rhythm three times in a row, and it's calculated so it lands on the downbeat of the cycle, of the rhythmic cycle. So it's a really exciting thing that can sound um, anything from very complicated and clever to just very um, imaginative and kind of crazy and fun and it can be played very fast or very slow and very offbeat or just, you know, really driving it home. So it's a really dynamic concept and it's often a really exciting part of the performance when the musicians start to trade to highs and join up with each other. To give you an idea of how we're going to be breaking down these tihais and teaching them in a way that's easy to understand, let's have a look at a sample of one of the lessons that's coming later on in the course. jog and then go on to look at different tihais. It's because there's a wonderfully recorded concert that I played with Manish and Gurdain Riot, our tablet player. Our trio is called Attuned and in this concert we're playing rag jog and there's lots of interesting tihais that are in that performance. So the later part of this course we'll actually be dissecting particular tihais that Manish played in the concert that are very sophisticated tihais. So that's really coming in the second part of the course. But in order to play those tihais, we need to understand what the basic ideas are behind them. And then we need to know the structure of Rag Jog because all of his phrases are within that melodic framework. So let's get onto Rag Jog now and look at the whole structure moving up and down the single G string, which works really well with Indian classical music. I've got a different arrangement of strings on my guitar. I've swapped the low two strings for some high E strings. They're actually tuned to the key of D, so they're tuned in unison with, with the open D string. So these are actually gauge eight strings, so they're very light sounding, and two of them together just create this nice texture that you can use. This nice texture that you can use in between playing. Um, so that's something that's really helping you to get the essence of Indian music more on the guitar. But apart from that, I'm just playing mostly on a single string, because that's also very akin to how you play. That's how, more how you play on the sitar, using a single string and doing all the ornamentations. Um, if you don't have the Chikari strings, if you, if you don't have maybe a spare guitar to experiment with, then you can just do drop D tuning, that works fine. So just tuning D, A, D. That will also work fine to give you a drone, and then you can sort of play over the top of that. Right, so in terms of the structure of the rag, um, we're just going to look at this diagram of the neck. I'll just explain how the diagram works. First of all, we're going to look at it using just the intervals numbered system that we have in Western music because that relates directly to the sargam system that we have in Indian music. So the two are 
pretty much one and the same thing. They're just different terminology, but it's the same system in terms of how they account for the different notes of an octave. So all of the notes that are in black, and the, the red note here is the root note, but all of those kind of solid notes, you can use those in ascending and descending motions. Whereas the hollow note, which is the flat third here, that can only be used in a descending motion. So once you play that note, then you have to go back down from there. You have to go from a minor third back to a root. And apart from that, you can just move pretty much freely around these notes. So let's just walk you through the structure. We would start with the root note here on fret 7, and then we'd move straight up to the major third, which is on fret 11, and then we have the 12 and 14 for the 4th and 5th note. Then we have flat 7 at fret 17, and then the root note again at 19. So that was a 7, 11, 12, 14, 17, 19. And then we could just go straight down from there, but let's just play one note above that, because that's going to be really useful a bit later for when we play a special pattern. In the second half of this lesson we'll be doing a pattern moving through this structure. I've just given a few different options as to where you can play this note. For example, on the B string you can play at fret 18 and then come back down to the 19 on the G string. Um, if you've got 22 frets, you could play it on that single string on the G string again, which is a really good way to do it. Um, I don't have 22 frets, I've only got 21 because this is a kind of old school strat, but I could, you could just do it as a bend. So that's probably what I would do. My case because that gives a nice flavor to that high note but you might find that that's just a bit more approachable to begin with so now we would begin to go down so from the root note we just go back to the flat seven and then back to the fifth so we've gone from 19 17 14 and back to a 12 now we need to go to a 10, so that gives us the flat third, the minor third of fret 10, and then we've got a sar, um, the root note again of fret 7. Um, and then the flat 7's there just to show you that you can continue going down from there to the flat 7. Okay, so you can move around this major third a bit more, so for example you might play um, a 14, 12, 11, and then maybe back up to the 12 going to the 10. So something like and then back to the, the root note. So in some cases people will actually play the major third going to the minor third. So you don't tend to do that major to minor third very often at all. It's normally just straight down or maybe a little bit of the major third and then up again before So now let's do the same thing again but with Sargam. So this is the system that we'll carry on using for the rest of the course. You really want to get the Sargam system because it's more of a vocal system and the intervals actually start to sound like the Sargam syllable in your mind. After a while you start hearing these notes and that begins to sound in your mind like Nisagasa. You know, you actually hear that interval and the syllable kind of springs into your head the more that you do this. So let's just move through this with the sargam. We have our sa at fret 7, so that's the root note, then straight up to the major third, so that's ga now, and then we have a ma, that's a fret 12, pa at fret 14, and then this is a cormal knee at 17, that's a flat 7, so for a cormal, which means flat, we just use lower case. So that's called Cormal Knee at fret 17, and then Sa at fret 19. So we've played Sa, Ga, Ma, Pa, Cormal Knee, Sa, Sa, Ga, Ma, Pa, Cormal Knee, and Sa. Um, and when you're just, you know, reciting it, you don't need to say Cormal Knee, you can just say Sa, Ga, Ma, Pa, Ni, Sa. 
it doesn't change if it's Cornwall or natural, you know, sharp or flat. You just say ni, you just say the, the syllable on its own. So we've played sa, ga, ma, ba, mi, sa, and let's just touch that high ga so we can do that again on the B string for 18. Or we can do it as a bend. If you've got 22 frets, you can play it on that 22nd fret. So now going down, we have sa, ni, and then the pa, back to a ma for a 12, and then again we can go straight to a 10. So there's the Cornwall ga. Again, that's lower case because it's the flattened version. So here we've got the upper case for should ga. Should means natural, and then we've got the lower case for the Cornwall, Cornwall meaning flat. And then back to sa, fret 7, and then just below that we have the Cornwall. So let's play the ascending and descending structure now. We're just stopping on sa at the top and then coming back down from there. I hope you've enjoyed that video and found it useful so far. If you'd like to see the rest of it, it's available on Patreon. So far the first few chapters are available there, and every week there's a new chapter coming out. The whole course will be available as a one-off purchase by October, if you'd like to do it that way around. And also, at the moment, the Essential Techniques for Indian Guitar course is available again at 40% off. That will be until the end of September. So if you'd like to check that out, that just gives you a really good idea of the groundwork that's needed to understand Indian classical music and apply it to the guitar. And finally, I've just started something called the Indian Classical Guitar Academy. And this is um, a group that I do with other students on Zoom. We get together in just groups of four, so there's lots of time to give people feedback and to go through the details and look at how everyone's progressing. I've just started the first group with some students and it's been getting off to a really, really good start. So that's something that I'm going to carry on doing and expand into more groups. So please get in touch if you'd like to join one of these future groups. There's only a few spaces available. So yeah, just jump on and send me an email if you'd like to find out about how to join that group because it's proving to be a really good way for people to go a bit deeper into this style and get some feedback on their playing and then really move things forward. So looking forward to seeing more students on the Zoom sessions and yeah, take care and I'll see you on another video.